the fastest a group of cyclists can go is when riding in a pace line. It's the best way to combine your efforts to slice through the wind as fast as possible. Now, you might not call it that though. You might call it through and off, or bit and bit, or a chain gang perhaps. But whatever, the principles remain the same. This is how to go as fast as possible. To ride in a pace line, you want to be on flat or rolling roads where the speed is high. And you're gonna need at least four of you. Although, the more the merrier. The idea of a pace line is that you spend a short time on the front of the group, pushing into the wind, and then move to the back, seeking shelter whilst waiting for your turn again. This means that when you are on the front, you can ride much, much harder than you would on your own because you know you have time to recover after. And the more riders there are, therefore, the more recovery you will get. There are two basic kinds of pace line. The single pace line is a single line of riders where you spend 10 to 20 seconds on the front before peeling off, slowing down a fraction and drifting to the back where you take up your place in line again. Now this is probably the fastest way to do it. If you watch a team time trial in a race, this is what they're going to be doing. And it's really efficient because you actually spend less time changing riders, which you'll quickly find is actually a really demanding bit. And it's also good because you very easily balance out the different abilities within your group. So stronger riders can have longer turns on the front and weaker riders can do shorter ones. When you are going uphill and on the front, it can be a good idea to ease off a bit. That's to factor in that though the riders behind you are still sheltered from the wind, they're having to work quite hard to ride uphill, so they're not getting the usual recovery. In terms of judging how long your turn on the front should be, you should use other riders as a little bit of a gauge. You don't want to do too much more than your fair share, and you certainly don't want to go too hard and fall into that trap of then not being able to get back on the back and get dropped. That is not good for you, clearly, but then nor is it good for the rest of the group. Losing even a weak rider will mean less recovery from everyone else, but losing a strong but over eager rider is gonna be a hammer blow. And do make sure you leave a bit in the tank for that effort to get on the back of the line. When training team time trials, the pros always emphasize that your effort is not over until you're back safely on the pace line. you have the double pace line, so called because you have two lines of riders. One faster, moving forwards, and then a slightly slower line, which is moving backwards relative to the fast line. Your time on the front is just long enough to move from the fast line to the slow line before drifting to the back again. You can be sure you will get shouted at if you do search. However, I agree it is sometimes hard not to get carried away on the front. So one good tip is to keep half an eye on your speed to check you're not accelerating when you get to the front. With practice, you'll be able to do this entirely on feel, even in undulating terrain. Now, as soon as you're clear of the rider in front, you can start to move across. The tighter you keep things, the more shelter everyone gets, and therefore the faster you will go. But it's not essential to bang your mate's handlebars with your ass as you go through, even if you have a big one. And then it's simply a case of gently easing off because as you've seen, you don't have to wait long before your shelter comes around. That's so long as you haven't surged on the front. No surging. As you get to the back of the line and move across, it can be a good idea to tell the next rider that you were last so they know to start accelerating. Now in a well-drilled group, it's not necessary, but it doesn't cost anything, and it can help to keep the group moving nice and smoothly. Hop. A simple up is literally all it needs, just to let that last rider know that the back of the group is approaching, up, and they can accelerate 
and jump back in. If the last rider doesn't switch over to the other line, it all goes wrong. The string unravels and you end up on the front. Now in races, this can happen as riders try and sneakily hide and save their energy. There are ways for dealing with sneaks, but in the short term, in order to restart it, the rider in second position needs to do an extra turn and accelerate past rider one, then move across, effectively kickstarting the pace line all over again. Another way it can go wrong is if the rider coming from the faster line stays on the front too long and doesn't pull over to the slower line until too late. Now that leaves the rider who pulled over just before, who's now going slower, remember, stuck in the wind for much longer than they expected. And it creates a gap in the slower line between them and the show-off rider that eventually pulls over late. Now it might not sound like much, but the extra effort for that gapped rider can make a big difference, especially if they're riding at their limit. In fact, it can be a sneaky way to tire out other riders in the breakaway in a race to give you a better chance of beating them all at the end. So there are a few hints and tips on how to make fast group riding work for you and those you're riding with, be they friends or rivals. Just remember that golden rule, try to keep something in reserve to make sure you don't get dropped. Even the strongest riders can come unstuck by trying to do too much for a group.